Well, I was only three years old at the time, so I didn't know you couldn't sleep. You didn't, just didn't sleep with your eyes open. Hi everybody, this is Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have part three of my interview with Daryl, who was awarded a release after 23 years on a life sentence. But this one's a little bit different. He divulges so much information about his past and all of the traumas that he went through in his childhood. I didn't want to be the one to ask him to go into that because I didn't think that was fair of me to put him on the spot like that, although I did put him on the spot hardcore and he got so embarrassed towards the end of the video but he was the one in an email earlier that asked me if I was okay with him going into that and I was like yes I think that that needs to be shared so you guys can see sometimes the trauma that leads to people going to prison that is so much pent up hurt and so much PTSD and this started for him as early as three years old. Please go into this video with an open mind and an open heart. And if you're one of those people that's do the crime, do the time, and you stumbled upon this video, I hope that this helps open your eyes and your heart a little bit. And also what I said to Daryl, and I'll say it to you guys here too, is that I hope his story and Adam's story, we can use as cautionary tales to people who are involved with a child who has been exposed to a lot of trauma in their young years, in their youth, and you can get them on the right path. You can get them the help that they need so they don't go down a road of a life of drugs or crime or both or anything in between. We can use these stories to help the children. If you're interested, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the author of a book called The Comeback Code, the founder of a nonprofit called Strong Prison Wives and Families, and I use my years of experience to help prison wives and family members make the best out of this crummy situation. We don't glorify or glamorize prison life or prison wife life here. We're just trying to do our best. Before you go, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Also, ding the bell and hit subscribe so you're notified every single time I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes we go live on the days in between. Without wasting any more time, here is my video with Daryl. I think it's his most vulnerable and the deepest he goes with us so far. If you have questions, post them in the comments below. He has been so sweet and he offered to do these videos with us anytime that we want. How's everything going? Everything's going good. Just uh, reality is just slowly seeping in. <laughs> Well, talk, you know what? Last time I didn't catch that on camera, so talk to me about that. Well, it's just the, the only word that comes to my mind is it's surreal. And yeah. I think, it's just, I think for me, it's just because I'm generally guarded in nature anyway. Uh, I think it maybe a defense mechanism for me and not totally believe it until I actually walk out. Sure. Does it feel like they're going to rip the rug out from under you, kind of? <laughs> yeah, it kind of does. I know that's uh, kind of... Uh, uh, conspiracy theory thinking, but I've been told no several times when we all thought I had a really good presentation, so that factors into it as well. I don't think it's conspiracy theory. I think it's conditioning, and I think it's a little bit of trauma that you've been through, because I had a similar experience back before the Davis case. It was the Demaya case came through, and right. on one hand, I'm going, this is it. He's going to come home. And I made a video every day about it. But on the other hand, I'm going, this is too good to be true. I'm just waiting for them to pull the rug out. And sure enough, they did, just like other times in the past. So I, th I think you're being cautious based off of what's happened in the past. But thank God yours is like ink on paper. Yeah. So what else do you have for me? Well, do you want to go back and clarify what you were talking about the other day? You said you forgot and you felt like you were leaving people out or something. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I think you, I think one of the questioners had asked what was other than finding out that I was getting out, what was the happiest moment or day in prison. Yeah. Uh, one of the ones that's right up there, I think, you know, getting my degree was really uh, fulfilling from an individual accomplishment standpoint, but I think one of the most happy moments, I guess I could say, is my brother and his family. Uh, he and I re reuniting almost after 30-something years because uh, we both share the same father and I had got adopted and pretty much removed from my, my entire biological family. And he had been searching uh, for me for, uh, for all these years. And my first name's Daryl, but I've always gone by my, by my middle name. And coincidentally, he didn't have my full legal name because, you know, we were both children when we got separated. And uh, one day he found me stumbled on a, a right of prisoner site and wrote me, wasn't totally sure it was me, but that was in October of 2011, so they've been steadfast supporters ever since, so that was definitely one of the happiest moments for me. 
what are the odds that he would stumble yeah. on right a prisoner not knowing his brother's in prison? Yeah, I know. Wow. Yeah. Well, of course it's a happy day. That's beautiful. And especially that you developed such a beautiful relationship. Now, it's up to you. Do you want to divulge a little bit more about your past? Sure. Well, let's see. I was, uh, I jokingly refer to myself as a miracle baby. And the reason why I say that is my biological mom, uh, Sherry McKenzie, uh, patron, she had been previously diagnosed as being barren from previous marriages. She had really wanted kids, so she had tried, and two different doctors had declared her barren. So lo and behold, when she married my father, uh, because of the previous diagnoses, she didn't think anything of it. Uh, she woke up one morning, morning, what I assumed to be morning sickness. She didn't think it was pregnancy, so she went to the doctor, and it was, uh, he declared it a kidney infection. So he gave her some medication that didn't work. She went back. Uh, it's still a kidney infection. So goes to a second doctor after that. that this call is from a federal prison. And uh, he said it was an urinary tract infection. Uh, then it goes to, she goes to a third doctor, and finally she's like, look, I don't know why they diagnosed you the previous times with an infection, urinary, or kidney, or otherwise, but you're pregnant. <laughs> and she's like, uh, that can't be, I've been declared barren. She's like, well, I'm telling you, you're pregnant. So they, uh, they referred to me jokingly as uh, my little, little, little kidney infection. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were, we were extremely poor, but from what I remember, we had very happy moments. Uh, my, one moment that stands out, my mom was in the bathroom uh, giving me a bath. For some reason, she tells me to go wake up my father. So I walk down the hallway, and my, my father is laying down sideways on the couch, resting on his arm, watching TV, it appeared to me. Uh, I was only three years old at the time, so I didn't know you couldn't sleep. You did, just didn't sleep with your eyes open. So I tried to wake him up, couldn't wake him up, go back to my to the bathroom. My mom uh bathing herself now. I tell her, look, I can't wake him up. She's like, uh, uh, oh, I'll wake him up when I get done. So I happily return to my uh, bathroom uh, full, of, full of toys. She finishes, so she comes down there, and I can remember I'm the first one walking down the hallway. We lived in a trailer, and uh, but I my attention was on the TV because Willie Tunes was on. And that was one of my most favorite shows was, you know, who doesn't like Bugs Bunny at that age, right? So uh, I just remember her uh, crying and screaming, and she runs past me and goes to the rotary phone. And I still, I don't know, subconsciously, if I block out what was in front of me, but I just followed her path. She couldn't dial 911 because she's shaking so hysterically. Coincidentally, the neighbors who were best friends with my mother and father, they came over because they heard her scream. They come in. The, the, the lady who was good for, best friends with my mom, she starts crying up on her sleep. And her husband or boyfriend sees what the, what the cause of all the commotion is, gets them out, but forgets about me. And then that's when I look at my father. And my father is... Uh, He's sitting on the couch, and it's uh, not to be too macabre, but it's uh, like the movie Carrie, you know, just, you know, blood was uh, gushing out uh, profusely. And I guess he had had a previous heart attack, or a previous uh, car wreck where a piece of metal had penetrated his heart, and this time, the myocardial infarction happened, and it almost, uh, his heart almost uh, exploded, for lack of a better term. So when I, I don't know how many minutes later, it seemed like forever, I uh, seen the sirens, and I guess they realized they left me there. So they ushered me out, and then not long after, uh, my mother remarries, uh, but it's pretty tragic. She remarries pretty much a monster who was an alcoholic and, you know, beat the both of us up, and it's kind of like the movie with Jennifer Lopez was taken, uh, but she ushers her, us out of the cloak of night uh, he had kidnapped us at one point uh, we go to a, a pretty major city i think it was chicago where her sister stayed uh, i'm trying to hurry up through this um, i don't know if, it, if it's helping or not but uh, at one point uh you know i'm, I'm playing on a uh, 
high rise, the the the, elevator, the stairway in the back, uh, get the fire escape, see all kinds of stuff, uh, you know, prostitutes and knife fights and someone got shot and just, you know, hovering this stuff. Then I get kidnapped at one point and my sister and my mom and, and the people that they had over got into an altercation and they finally got me back. And I guess my my sister's, uh, my, my mom's sister, my aunt, I don't know if it was because of this, but at some point, you know, uh, I'm sitting beside her, and mind you, I'm still three years old, and she selfishly took her own life, and I'm right beside her. Your si her sister or your mother? This is my mom's sister. My okay. Mm -hmm. And um, then after that, I guess my mom saw right away that uh, this wasn't sanctuary, that she was you know, that she had solved it. So we made our way back home after learning that the husband who had, you know, beat us up and everything, he had been arrested. Coincidentally, he had murdered another woman. Uh, so when we get there, I guess all this time, she had neglected her health. So she had a checkup, a follow-up, determined that she had got uh, breast cancer and it had metastasized. And um, so I was with her to, to the day she died. You know, I, I found out at my trial that, you know, um, you know, I'm rubbing her back, thinking I'm rubbing the cancer away. Uh, that was pretty hard to take there. How old were you uh, then? I was five years old, and she had uh, her friends. She she made them she made them make a promise to try to find a loving home for me. Coincidentally, the Antles, uh, the birth of their daughter Cindy, uh, rendered my Juanita Antle. She couldn't have any more kids, and uh, she wanted. She didn't want Cindy to grow up alone without any siblings, so they were looking into adopting a, a boy, age six months to ten years old, and they had found out about me, so they visited me, and uh, I was staying with my, uh, Grady, my, my Grady Ruth, who was trying to prevent the, the state of Kentucky from putting me into their foster homes, because we heard nightmares about that, well, they heard nightmares about that. She was legally blind and almost legally deaf, and she could barely walk around, and she was extremely poor, and, People from the Let's call it from a federal prison. Would buy stuff to help, you know, uh, feed us and stuff like that. So when the Antlers came and seen me, they seen something out of a nightmare. But they said it was still love at first sight. And uh, they adopted me and I took their name. And uh, uh, they're wonderful human beings. Uh, but uh, the, one of the ironic parts, and I jokingly tell my mom and dad this, at the trial, I'd heard that one of the interviews with the social workers, they said, look, you know, he's experienced more in his, in his first five years of life than most people have to wait a, a lifetime. So don't be surprised if he ends up in prison someday. <laughs> so I tell mom and dad, like, you told me this, I could have done something to prevent this. Right. You know, but yeah, uh, but yeah, I had a, I had a really uh, traumatic childhood. It, it um, uh, I guess it's, it, Helped me to appreciate, uh, you know, loved ones and and, and and people going through their own tragedies and whatnot. But uh, in some ways, I think it's helped me endure through all this. But uh, yeah, that's a little bit of my, of my story. That's it, well, it's heart wrenching. I'm sitting here trying not to shed tears on camera, but it just shows that you know the do the crime, do the time people have no idea what people have been through and how traumatized they are. And for somebody to even say that, and it's ironic that also Adam was told when he was younger, you're going to wind up doing life in prison one day and how you could tell by the trauma somebody has. And yeah. my hope is that your story and Adam's story and all of these stories are cautionary tales and can help people get these children help. So it avoids, yeah. they avoid going through what you guys have been through. Okay. And I know we only have a couple minutes left. So, if there's anything that you want to talk about, let me know. And also, he he he, why don't you talk to the little, the few admirers out there? Oh, a few admirers. <laughs> uh, you you just love putting me on the spot. I thought we were better than that. We are, we are, but this is all love. Uh, well, just say hi. Uh, you know, uh, I'm open to exploring uh, friendships. You know, anybody wants to uh, talk to me when I get out, we can talk and see what interests we have. And uh, I can assure you I'm loyal. I think I'm funny. Not, you can just 
make an attempt to laugh at my cheesy jokes. Um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I feel like we're a human live Match.com ad right now. This is great. This is what I live for. I just wanted to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that I forgot to ask you or that you want to talk about? I'm sure we'll get tons of questions from this. So if you want to do another one. I, I can take up. Okay. I can take up. Okay. Now we, can, we can do this as often as you'd like. Okay. I prefer you to put me on the spot again. I no. promise I won't. I won't even add that part. If you if you don't want me to add that part, I won't. No, I'm just joking with you. Okay, good. I know you could. You're a tough guy. You could handle it. You got military behind you. You got prison. Or I know you could. You can handle it. Yeah. Well, hopefully I get to speak to some of these admirers someday. Yeah, I hope so too. I'll get uh, when you're out. I'll get an email address and we'll get that out there for you. Look, uh, I miss you and Adam Tons, and you know, I love you all. Anything you need me to do, just let me know. We love you too, and he's so looking forward to hanging out on the outside, hopefully sooner than we all think. Okay, you take care, okay? You too. Right, bye. Bye. Wow. I was trying so hard not to start sobbing. I knew some of that story. I didn't know all of that story. That's why you saw me flinch bef like long before he got to the point about his dad. I did not know the other stuff. I knew about the, his aunt's suicide, but I didn't know any of the other stuff. So I was ugh, kind of learning it with you guys too. So, so sad. If you guys have words of encouragement for Daryl, just post them below. Also, I know most of you guys who watch me are in a relationship, but somebody did, I can't remember who, and I'm not putting you on the spot, but somebody posted that Daryl was cute or something like that. And I told him, he's like, if you could hook me up with any of my admirers, I'd be cool with that. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> we match.com added it. Why do I make up verbs that aren't verbs? We made a match.com live and in stereo and I felt so bad for putting him on the spot, but like, I'm an annoying little sister. I have to do that kind of stuff to him. So if anybody's interested, I will get an email for him when he gets out of jail. Or actually I can send your information to him on Coral Links if you want. Otherwise ignore. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart, Daryl's heart, and even Adam's heart. And even Adam's heart, he's like the star of this channel. Why did I say it like that? And Adam's heart to all of yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>